Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today, this is a quick tutorial talking about polar coordinates with a seamless texture in Blender nodes. It can potentially be used to create kinds of 2D shockwave animations or so. I've already built it in the form of a preset called a polar coordinate. You can download this demo file I'm showing for free from the link in the description. Please pay attention that each collection is holding a material with node tree for demonstration. We have collections starting from the basics, in which it has some nodes in the node tree, asking you to tweak parameters to play around. We have an automated water wave example. We have shockwave that requires you to play around the parameters, or more complex shockwave group that are driven by keyframes. In this tutorial, I'm going to break down the core concepts of this polar coordinate system. The main purpose is to take this opportunity to talk about closures in Blender nodes and how it changes the asset creation and usage workflow. Closure is not really needed for beginners to know, but this can be kind of basic in the future. So regardless, we are going to discuss some practical usage of it in shader. Let's start with basic concepts of texture coordinates, which are used to map the texture. Most commonly, we're using UV map coordinates. It ranges from 0, 0 to 1, 1. And thus, textures you downloaded from internet are in square shapes to fit in this area. UV unwrapping also generates texture in this area by default. A classical example is cube. As you can see, it's being unfolded to map itself to this 2D texture. Here, these UV and the mappings are all in kind of linear fashion, which is officially called the Cartesian coordinate system. Polar coordinate or spherical coordinate is a specific mass formula which transforms these straight lines into a radial form. It's like folding a plane into a circle. Although it's not exactly what we will be doing, uh, you can take this analogy. Here, I have this core function to do it in shader. If you hit the tab, you can peek inside the node group. I'm not really going to explain it because I just copy pasted the formula from ChatGPT. I was just putting formula into pieces like a Lego game. If the formula asks me to square root, I use a square root. The formula asks me to divide, I divide. I'm driving a car without knowing how to build it. So let's go outside. Here I'm using this coordinate to drive this noise texture. Then it comes to the real topic today, the theme of polar coordinates, as you see from this noise texture. It's essentially a known limitation with this concept. As you can see from the initial example of holding a plane, these two edges was not together. Another common example is the UV map of the UV sphere where you can just see it's the same. So this same is not evil. It's a part of common sense. However, if you want to do visual effects, sometimes you want to solve this common sense. The method is well known in the history, mentioned by Andrew Kramer from Video Copilot using After Effects. The idea is that on uh, one texture, you have a scene on uh, one side. You have another texture with coordinates rotated by 180 degrees so that the seam becomes on the other side. And finally, you mix these two textures with a mask using this polar coordinate. You map it to 0, 1, 0. And the final product of mixing will be a mirror image where they cover the seam on each other. You can add some offsets on whichever axis to remove this mirror while keeping them seamless. One note is that as we mix texture in this gray area, sometimes you will see the second degree texture a little bit grayish. There are many ways to solve it. For example, to use another color ramp to restrict the area of mixing. But I would leave it for now as it's beyond the scope of this tutorial. And it doesn't really look bad in my opinion. Another note is that this method must not be perfect for all textures. If your texture has some obvious patterns, such as a brick texture, then it breaks immediately no matter what. 
But for people who are doing visual effects with procedural textures, this method should be more than enough. Overall, this sounds like a very easy concept and a simple technique to implement. But practically, it turns out to be very difficult to be more procedural. This entire setup takes quite some nodes to construct from scratch. But if you put the entire function into a node group, you realize you cannot change the texture and the color ramp from outside. Another issue is that even if you save this setup as a node template, if you change the parameter of one texture, you need to change the other to make the overall image looks harmonic. This is also true for your color ramp. Ultimately, it's very easy to do polar coordinate with a seamless texture, but it's a bit tedious that even if you know the answer so well, you cannot improve the workflow by putting them into an asset like the original polar coordinate group we have already. This has however been changed in 5.0, where we start to get a closure and the evaluate closure. Closure is essentially just a group node the same as the polar coordinate group I have used here. If you're using closure to replace the group nodes, it becomes like this. And I can ungroup this node group to fully replace its function. If you output the mix, you get the previous mirror image and we can add some offsets to make them look different again. Here, closure has a more important uh, characteristic that it allows insertion of a node tree in the middle of data flow and deduplicate the functions we added. As a result, previously we needed two group nodes or functions of polar coordinates. Now we only need one. Similarly, previously we needed two textures and two color ramps. Now if we replace it into a single one and output this mixed result, you can change the parameter easily. You can switch the texture easily. You can change the color ramp easily as well. All of these functions will be equally passed on two pathways. And more importantly, you can put the core functions into a group nodes and leaving the closure outside for your customization. Therefore, this is the basic design concept. In the actual presets, I've added some more outputs in the closure zone as color and alpha. It should be easy to achieve their use. It should be easy to perceive their use cases. Again, the demo file for some use cases are free to download. Overall, this is the concept of how closure solves some critical UX issues in the history of Blender development. There are similar cases such as separate RGB or other functions in the future. But this is for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I will probably see you next time. Bye-bye.